My main research project is looking at the evolution of white-footed mice in New York City. This species is a common resident of forests in the northeastern United States. This is not the kind of mouse you find uh, in a building or in your house. We have actually 15 different parks in New York City that we've looked at. Um, we have some focal parks that we concentrate on, like the New York Botanical Garden. And what we're looking at is, is how living in an urban environment is changing their evolutionary trajectory. The first step is, is we have to go out and trap them. So we set out these big grids of uh, small mammal traps that catch them alive. We take the mice out of the traps and we weigh them and we measure them. Um, we take some notes on their general appearance and whether they have parasites, that sort of thing. And then for our genetic analyses, because we're looking at evolutionary changes that are expressed, that you can see in the genes, we usually just take a small clip of tissue from the end of the tail or maybe from the ear. We decided on the right ear, right? The first thing we learned, which surprised us quite a bit, uh, is that the mice are very dense in these parks, and they actually maintain genetic variation. What we're working on now is identifying specific genes in the mice that have changed due to natural selection uh, from living in the city. And that's ongoing, but we have a few candidates already, and most of them have to do with immunity, dealing with heavy metals and pollution. If you look at the soil in the city, you have a lot of lead left over, and in those parks, the mice seem to be adapting at genes that can actually remove heavy metals from the body, or at least resist the damage from the heavy metals. We're looking specifically for changes that give you a different amino acid. From a scientific perspective, this is just a really interesting model system to study evolution. I think for the average person, you know, if they're going to experience nature, especially you know, think of a child growing up in New York City, they will experience urban ecosystems. And that is going to be their nature primarily. So if we're going to teach them about the natural world, we probably want to teach them about these urban ecosystems and how they work. Also, from a more practical perspective, you know, the white-footed mouse is just one species, but it is a mammal, and it's fairly closely related to our major lab organism, uh, the laboratory mouse, which is the main model for human health research. So if we can understand what's happening to these mice living in the city and adapting in the city, we might have some leads on how urban life affects humans as well. We got everything, right? Yeah.